Good morning and welcome to Lifeway Worship, whether you're in the building or whether you're joining us online. We're in our third week of our series, Dysfunction or Dysfunctional, when we've been looking at how the love of God or how the love and the grace of God tra can transform the dysfunction, not only in our relationships with himself, but also with others. So today we look at our everyday relationships with friends, colleagues and acquaintances. How is it that the love and grace of God can transform the relationships with the people that we meet each day? What would it be like if we all got along? Is that even possible? That's what we'll explore today as we talk about functional relationships. So as, as we gather today, well, we'll gather today in the name of the God who has restored us to relationship with himself in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, all you weary, come, all you thirsty, come to the well. That never runs dry Drink of the water Come and thirst no more Come all you sinners Come find his mercy Come to the table He will satisfy Taste of his goodness Find what you're looking for For God so loved the world that he gave us is one and only His Son to save us Whoever believes in him will live forever Bring all your failures, bring your addictions Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting there with open arms God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever the power of hell forever defeated now it is well I'm walking in freedom for God so loved God so loved the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him, for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only his son to save us for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only his son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever the power of hell forever defeated now we I'm walking in freedom for God so loved, God so loved the world. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the love you have shown us by sending Jesus to die in our place so that we can be reconciled and restored to relationships with you. Grow in each of us hearts of love and grace for those who do not, know, do not yet know you. May the love we show to them and each other direct others to you, the source of all love and grace. Amen. Yeah. 
and this is Lifeway News. I hope that you've all had a fantastic week. The Lifeway Chinese community are hosting a moon festival on Saturday the 23rd of September from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Lifeway Church at Epping. If you, if you would like any more information, please speak to Pastor Francis or check the Lifeway website for more details. On Sunday the 24th of September, you can hang out and meet with other Christians from other churches in the Epping area at a local church's meetup from 11.30 a.m. at Carlingford High School. Come and enjoy a sausage sizzle, some outdoor games, and a family-friendly environment while you build connections with Christians from other churches in our community. You can find more details on the Lifeway website. Also on Sunday, the 24th of September, St Albans Anglican Church, Epping, is also hosting a hymn fest event from 2 p.m. Ten well-known hymns will be played by ten different organists, and the aim is to lift the roof off the church with songs of praise to God. If that sounds like your thing, then you can also find the details for this event on the Lifeway website. That's all for Lifeway News this week. I'm Lily Von Stanky. Have a wonderful week, everyone. When I worked in retail, we often used to say, we'd get so much more done if it wasn't for the customers. Teachers often proclaim that teaching would be the best job in the world if it wasn't for the students or the parents. <laughs> Nurses have been known to say something similar. Nursing is a great job if you take away the doctors and the patients. Anyone who has a job in, people, in the people-focused industry probably appreciates that sentiment. There's both great joy in the privilege of having a job which is about supporting and helping others, but sometimes the others you have to help make it extremely difficult. The reality is that we live in a world where dealing with other people is unavoidable. 
We need to know how to relate to others positively and interact with one another effectively in order to keep our society functioning because in the words of a well-known Disney high school musical, we're all in this together. But what about when we don't see things that way? What about when rather than being in it all together, we instead come to believe that the rest of the world is out to get us, or at least that we're on our own, we have to figure it out by ourselves. What does that do to our interpersonal relationships? Well, thankfully we have a God who says to us, you're never alone. I'll never leave you or forsake you. We have a God who came to be with us and show his love and to care for us and to give us all the love that we need to be able to love and serve those around us and show them the life-transforming love of Jesus. And it's that life and relationship transforming love that we'll look at today. We'll explore that today as we talk about functional relationships. Our theme verse is 1 John 4. 10 to 11, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. It's a good wedding text. Anyone have that as their wedding text? Good. <laughs> that's my wife over there, if you're watching, that's what we're just checking. That's a test. You pass, you can stay. <laughs> It's a joke. Something to remember or something to think about. Love is only love with Christ at its heart. Let's see what God has to say to us in that text. Today's reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given of his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and declare our faith in the God who loves us so much that he sent his Son. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, Son of the Father from eternity, and also true human being, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. At great cost he has saved and redeemed me, a lost and condemned person. He has freed me from sin, death, and the power of the devil, not with silver or gold, but with his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. All this he has done that I may be his own, live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead and lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. 
You may be seated, but if the children would like to come forward. Thanks, you guys. You know what this is? Kite. Well done. It's a kite. Show it to the camera. It's a kite. How does it work? How do you make it work? You do. Take it outside. When there's not too much wind, when there's a little bit of wind, you put it in the wind. So that's what... And is that the stuff... Is that what keeps the kite in the air? Who's done some kite flying? Have you ever, ever done it? No, it's good fun. Good fun if you get the right day. It's good fun. Maybe you can do that one day. So it's the wind. How do you know it's the wind that keeps the kite up? Have you seen the wind? So how do you know? How do you know it stays in the air because of the wind? Can you feel the wind? Yes. Can you see what the wind does sometimes? Can you hear the wind? That's true. So all of those things. Deb was reading before and she said, she read something that said, no one has ever seen God. Is that right? No one has ever, have you seen God? The Bible's right, no one's ever seen God. But, can you see, I've sort of seen God. Because I've seen what God can do through people. See the two ladies down the back? You, you stand up, see that lady down the back? Stand up, Sabine, Mary. When I look at those ladies... I see a bit of God there. They're wonderful helpers at mainly music and at church. They come and do a whole bunch of stuff. I know that when I look at them, you can sit down, thank you, that I see God. Have a look at Fritz, the man just here. He's a very generous man. When I look at him, I see a little bit of, okay, Father Christmas, sure. But, <laughs> but I also see a bit of God. In there, because I see some stuff that he does around here, and he's very generous, and he gives you stuff. Look at the people down the back on, on the sound desk. Those people come along every week, and they do stuff because God loves them, and they say, "Well, I can do some stuff too to show my love for God." So they come and help out. So no, that's true. We really haven't seen God or what He looks like. But we do know that God works through all of these people here. And if you look at them, you can see a bit of God. We're going to hear a little bit later from some, some of our um, people that went to Cambodia very soon again. And now, when I look at them, I say, I can see a bit of God in there. Because the work they were doing over there was loving people. And why were they doing that? Because God loves them. So when I look at the Cambodia team, I see a bit of God in there as well. So something to remember when you look around, especially in a building like this, you can actually see God. Let's pray. Lord, we can't see you, but we know you are there because we can see what you've done. And we can see you moving and we can feel your presence and we can hear you speak in our hearts. Thank you for being there. In Jesus' name, Amen. So if you want to go and get, there's four sheets to choose from over there. Choose two of them to do. Get a clipboard and choose two of them on the, on the stairs over there. So go and grab something and you can look at that. And we've got our, I was going to say our final Cambodia presentation. Not necessarily our final. I've asked our Newcastle people to try and work out a time to come down and present as well. But we've got our roomies today, Craig and Walter. Craig and Walter, they're going to come and do a little presentation. Of there, a bit about, yes, use the mic, yeah. Just bring up that first photo there, will you, Matt? That a good shot. Walter's good at photographs. We'll talk about that in a minute. That's what Craig has for breakfast. That's what he had in <laughs> Cambodia. You know how P... I was amazed. He, he'd eat anything. <laughs> Go to the street stalls. Didn't matter what. He did. So I was impressed with what, with what um, Craig ate there. 
The next one's a just shot of James, but we, uh, we can show that later. Okay. Thanks, Craig. All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and um, thank you, Pastor Mark, for the opportunity. And um, so, look, uh, this was my first uh, church trip, and um, I guess I took it on because I was a bit intrigued to find out how God is working in Cambodia, which is, you know, it's predominantly Buddhist um, com community. And, um, and as a doctor and as a scientist, I was interested in, well, how is healthcare delivery there? And also I wanted to challenge myself a bit in terms of my own uh, faith and uh, direction in life and everything. And so I always like to push myself. And, um, and all of those things came to light really. I mean, you, you've heard all of the tragedy of Cambodia and everything that's bad in the world has been concentrated in Cambodia. And so it did feel like in Psalm 23 that, um, you know, walk through the valley of death, but you fear no evil because God is with you. And there were many times where you could see that God is working. And, um, and I think what makes it so special is that um, it's a young population now, obviously, because you know, all of the elderly educated have um, been, were, were killed. And um, so it's just got this uh, love and vibrancy about it. And um, being the old guys in the group, it was very special for us to be around all of the youth and the energy that uh, that uh, brings. And, um, you know, to play with kids in schools and everything, haven't done that for many decades. So it was very... Um, very uh, liberating and uh, very uh, uplifting and I guess also coming out of the sort of rigid con confines of our society with all the constraints and everything in Cambodia, you've got to release all of that and just go with the flow and the way timelines happen and schedules happen and uh, spontaneity happens and everything, which again uh, is a big change for all of us. So I've got immense uh, admiration for Pastor Vibo and his work. He's had a lot of challenges over the years, political and everything. And he has this stealth-like approach to uh, practising the gospel and um, through schools, interacting with children. And so it's, um, it's, uh, it's God's love, but it's also about uh, important attributes to uh, grow you into adulthood and um, so pushing education and uh, strength of character and moral standards and everything which I thought was really good and it was very similar to a crazy American ambulance paramedic who just happened to be there then when we were there and he'd been going to Cambodia now for almost 15 years he went there with high expectations that he could set up a clinic and change the world uh, which was a disaster and um, he had a lot of personal suffering and everything, but he's kept at it. And so what he does, and I joined in with him, is he goes around schools and he teaches basic first aid in a rather engaging and a humorous manner. I had to carry around the skeleton, which always got a lot of uh, good uh, engagement with the children, talking about um, management of uh, bleeding, management of fractures, managing of airway obstruction, CPR, which was fantastic. There's, there's a photo of him there, Craig. That's, there's the so that Craig was his Andrew. driver. That was his driver who fell off a uh, roof. He was repairing his roof, had a major head injury, and, uh, and uh, my colleague flew back from America and helped with his health care. And, yeah, I, I managed... I took the photo, and uh, you can see that uh, family and connection and village, there's no rehabilitation, so it's just family connection and support that saved his life and um, everything. So it was nice sharing with Walter. Um, you know, that's when you go on a church mission, like any sort of close community activity, you get to know people uh, that you don't have an opportunity to do normally in passing. So it's nice to see Walter's beauty in the world in mathematics and uh, his quiet, assertive character. And we got on really well. And I think that was really a great thing to do is to get to know somebody in a, in a deeper way. So the final thing is that, uh, you know, we, we had all this euphoria and we got really excited about the opportunities that we could deliver in Cambodia. You come back here, you do get a bit more of a reality check, but we are challenged. 
about how to continue to support Pastor V. Boll and, um, and our church mission in Cambodia. You know, I'm an out, outcome-focused sort of guy. I like to know sort of measurable outcomes, but I think that's a hard thing to do. I think you've got a belief in the faith and the process and what we're doing. And hopefully, you know, if there's a handful of children who can get to university and be successful, there's a handful of people who can believe in God and come to the church. If there's a few people who we can save from premature death or craziness, it would be a major achievement. But I think it's more just going with the flow and believe in our mission uh, will achieve great things. Thanks a lot, Walter. Excellent. Thanks, Craig. Yeah. It's that building those relationships. We're in this relationship series. Now, Walter. Walter, we learned a couple of skills from Walter. How to open a beer bottle without an opener. <laughs> really important. That was fantastic. And I would, always, well, I would hang around with him because he takes great photos. I didn't take many because I was always next to Walter. Here's one of them. Just go to the next one. That was one. And just with his phone. And now I'll show you my shot of this out the same window. <laughs> so that's what I was thrilled to have Walter on. To take that one off now. That's, that's, go back to the, to the sunrise or sunset. Sunset, can you tell? No. That uh, was yeah, lovely. Good Thanks, Walter. All right. Thank you. Um, so it was my second mission trip. So I was a bit of a veteran, but I didn't feel like a veteran. So my expectations were basically shaped by what we had been doing in 2015 when we were at the slums in Bangkok. And wow, we did a lot of backbreaking work. So many walls, of, I have never washed or cleaned and painted so many walls and ceilings in my life ever since. So I expected to be very productive. And then there was a plan to build a house. And that was a bit concerning for me because Painting walls, yeah, I've done that before, but building a house. Probably the closest to that I got was playing with Lego with my boys. But, <laughs> but anyway, I didn't let that concern um, ruin my anticipation for the trip because I knew it would be a fantastic trip because of the team. In 2015, um, I knew a couple of people and made friends along the way. This time, I could actually call three quarters of the team close friends already, so what could go wrong? And made friends with another three, with my roomie Craig and these lovely two people from Newcastle, um, David and Joe, who were a perfect fit to, to, the, to the Epping team. Talking about team, it was an ideal composition. We had a big bunch of um, youngsters uh, hungry for new experiences, and I have to say, I'm immensely proud of the next generation of Liveway. They're so talented, they're humble, they're respectful, they're good looking, of course, they're funny, they're hands on, they're such a lovable bunch. And um, nothing can go wrong with them. So, yeah, thanks for them. They, they shared a lot of great experiences with us. Um, I have to admit, during the first couple of days, I felt a bit weird, so not productive at all. It was a strange feeling to sit in the school, like for one or two hours, very still, and being watched by hundreds of school kids. We on a chair, they on the ground, concrete or on soil, and we didn't know what, what they were talking about. So it was quite weird, and I started to think, what am I doing here? Certainly not being productive. But the penny dropped when I saw how easily and quickly our, the Cambodian youth bonded with our youth. So not through words, but through hugs and selfies and signatures and stickers and so on. It was such an incredible and touching experience. And even we all these felt like rock stars. It was just amazing. Um, so in that moment, I learned that to be productive, you don't actually have to do manual labor and you don't have to have an end product which you can take home or touch. So um, I realized that God didn't send us to build a house. They sent us to build relationships, and that's what we did. Uh, and in the end, we found something to paint, so it was great. I was back in my comfort zone. <laughs> 
I'm actually very optimistic about the, the work we're doing in Cambodia. Uh, as Craig said, it's a, it's a horrific past, but the Cambodian people are very, very happy and they make do with what they have, which is not a lot. Um, and it's incredibly ex um, important that this generation, that there will be a generation of educated young people who act, um, take active part in the society to actually get that country into, into, the, into the, the current um, century. So, and with Pastor Wiebel, we do have someone I think is, a, is an asset. So he's a bit like Mark Schultz. He's a jack of all trades, and I'm pretty sure he's able to repair lawnmowers as well. Um, <laughs> So he's got a vision, he's got big ideas, he's got people to help, and I personally feel really, really um, motivated to support the mission further on. I'm nearly done, but um, I want to share with you another God moment I had there. And I told the team on, on our last night in, in Siem Reap on our debrief dinner, I'm, I'm really impressed and I admire the generosity of the Lifeway community when it comes to the, the mission in Cambodia, with whether it work or money. And it mirrors the overall generosity of Australian people to help people who are doing it rough, who are underprivileged, dis disadvantaged. But there in Cambodia, I really realized you don't have to travel to Cambodia to find these people who are underprivileged and disadvantaged. And I'm talking about our First Nations people who, on average, die eight years younger than we do. Their kids have a much higher um, likability to die as infants, to drop out of school before year 10, or to spend part of their teenage years in jail. So it's really sad, and the, what, what's been done in the past really didn't help. So um, that's why they want to be heard. I've been a passionate supporter of the Yes campaign before going to Cambodia, but there in Cambodia, I actually heard God calling me to make that my personal mission and um, to triple my, my efforts. That's why I really beg you to read the Uluru Statement from the heart. It is the, f the core of the referendum we're going to have in four weeks' time. It basically tells everything what you need to know about the, that referendum, about the voice. And um, it's written and signed by hundreds of elders from um, indigenous tribes all over the country. And it's, it's, not, it's not a long document. It's just basically 400 words. It takes you four minutes maximum to read it. And I, I certainly um, think it is worth the time and our First Nations people who are basically front and center of every tourist campaign we do, and they are an integral part of the image other countries have of our country. So to, um, they deserve the four minutes of our time to read it. And I personally find it quite sad that this simple idea of taking, establishing a voice to parliament has become such a heated and sometimes hateful debate. Our First Nations people ask for a constitutional right to get heard about matters that impact them. Not more and not less. And really, can you say no to that? And because it's so difficult to find the way back to the Cambodian trips, I'll just leave it at this. Thank you. Thanks, fellas. It's good to be reminded that sometimes evangelism can start at home. Pastoral care can start in our backyard too, so that's a good reminder. Okay, faith talk questions, a couple of minutes. Chat to someone next to you and uh, see if you can answer some of these questions. Who are the people from your history who have best shown you the love of Jesus? How did they show you Jesus' love? And how do you think the world understands love and how is it different to how John talked about it in, from our reading today? A couple of minutes. Thank you. 
Okay, I might bring your attention back to the front. Let's pray. Our loving Father, we thank you for your love, your unconditional love seen through Jesus. Give us the strength to share that love with all, to be bold and love the unlovable with our actions, and if necessary, to use the right words. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in our third week of the series, which, as you may have noticed, is a very practical series of sermons, a very practical set. It's all about relationships or relationships that function. Some of the messages from the first two weeks may not have connected with some of you personally, families, marriages, but today and next week certainly will. Quick quiz first. Here's some old songs. Who sang them? Love me tender. Love Elvis, thank you. All you need is love. Good. You've lost that love and feeling. Yeah, I know the next line. I want you to tell me who, who the artist was. It's always a tricky one. There, was a, there, were, there were some covers of it. You lost that love and feeling. The Righteous Brothers, did you? Yeah. You can, you can say it louder, Greg. That's okay. Stop in the name of love. Supremes. Good, good, good. And they call it puppy love. Donny Osmond. Do you remember Donny Osmond? Give a little love. Take a little love. Think Tartan. Think band from Scotland. Come on. I'll oh, settle down. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hey, I didn't say they're my favourite songs. All right. So, Bay City Rollers. Some of you will say, who? What? what? No, there you go. I'm not in love. Yeah, 10 cc, good. That's right, yeah. I want to know what love is. Foreigner, who said, yes, well done. I will always love you. Whitney Houston. Crazy little thing called love. Queen. What's love got to do with it? Tina Turner. I just called to say I love you. Say it loud or I didn't hear anything. Stevie Wonder, yes, well done. It must have been love, but it's over now. Rock set, did you say? Someone say. You might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Very good. The list goes on and on. It's a familiar theme, which is, of course, love. Love makes the world go round, doesn't it? All great songs, well, maybe not, but... But all have something missing. The missing bit is why love? And where does this love come from? In our text today, we heard the word love 27 times. And this part of the Bible was written in Greek. And Greek had several different words for love, at least four. Here's a quick recap on the other three. Sorge refers to the unconditional love that parents have for their children. Parents here will know how that love feels. It's the love you'd find in families. Filio, sometimes known as brotherly love. It's the love we have for our friends, especially close friends. Eros, it's an intimate love, a passionate love, it's a physical love. But John, in this text, uses the other one. All through this passage, in the Greek, John uses the word agape. And you might have heard that, agape. Scholars will tell us that in the Bible, agape love is the kind of love God has for us and that we should have for God. It's the highest form of love. And it's an English word too, agape. That's how it's spelt. With the mouth wide open, as in wonder, surprise or eagerness, 
And that's right, because it's a love that astounds us. If you want to see this love demonstrated, look at Jesus. He's the evidence of God's love. He's the demonstration of God's love. In Christ we see the depth of his love and his compassion for us. Christ came because God loves us. Christ came because God is love. Christ came because God saw our need for love and did something about it. God saw a world that didn't really know how to love one another. God knew the way the world was heading, so he made that radical move. He sent Jesus to earth with a different message. When Jesus came to earth, it was a very violent society, and not just the Romans. Jesus lived and worked around Judea and Galilee, which was a hotbed for violence, and where crime included daily murder of Jewish sympathisers. And the zealots made war. Rome burned during Nero's time. Titus, who succeeded Nero, destroyed Jerusalem. All a violent backdrop to Jesus' life. Yet Jesus comes with a message of non-violence. He knew what was happening and said, hey, there is another way to deal with all of that. A non-violent way. Love your enemies. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for Christ. Love one another as I have loved you. And God did the unthinkable. In that, in that violent society, he sent Jesus to the cross for us. Jesus was prepared to die without killing others. He loved selflessly on the cross. He allowed himself to be spat on and to suffer, to be humiliated, to have the living daylights beaten out of him, to be slandered, talked about, and large nails rammed through his wrists. That's the love God did for us. You won't find another religion that has a leader like that. No other religion sends someone's son to die. And so think of how difficult that was. Christ left his throne in heaven knowing that he would have to offer the sacrifice of his life in order to save us from our sins. Christ humbled himself for us by being made in human form. Christ became an atoning sacrifice for our sins and he did that so that we might live through him. He died for us. He died for our benefit. He died so we could live. What greater love could ever be shown? How could anyone look at that sacrifice and not see the very love of God? He did it all for love. He did it all for you. And that's the love of, that God demonstrated. And John is asking us to love one another with agape love. Okay, we may say to ourselves, that sounds like hard work. Here's a letter to God from young Chloe. Dear God, I bet it's very hard for you to love all of everybody in the whole world. There are only four people in our family and I can never do it. <laughs> but it's actually part of our calling. God's love demands a response. God wants his love to be duplicated in us. Since God so loved us, we should love one another. That's how love is duplicated in us. If we love one another, our lives are reflecting the very love of God and this is how others will see God's love. But this can be hard because one of the hardest parts of agape love is forgiveness. We'll look at forgiveness another time, I'm sure, in our series, but it means letting go. The victim, it could be you, needs to let go. It means re relinquishing our right for justice and vengeance, letting go of the debt, giving up your desire for payback. In Cambodia, Christianity has only been there for a little over 100 years. And Pastor Vibol was telling us last week that loving your enemy is really hard. The Christian faith in Cambodia has introduced forgiveness. Before that, it was fight back. 
It was fight your enemy. So, love like God, but it won't always be easy. Expect to get hurt. Be prepared to not be understood, because God's love really doesn't make sense. Be ready for the grief that may come with loving like God. We should be able to agree to disagree and still love the person. And it might be awkward, it might get tricky, because real love has a cost. And we know how much it costs Jesus. But in our world, it gets its hands dirty. Love gets its hands dirty. It takes a chance. It takes a gamble. Love makes a statement and leaves a legacy. It does the unexpected, the surprising and the stirring. It performs acts that steal the heart and leaves an impression on the soul. So love is from God. And that means that it isn't from anywhere else. So if a person loves, loves with agape love, they are doing something that only comes from God. Their agape love shows that they are born of God. But if agape love isn't there, it means they probably don't know God. And because God loves, so can we. One of our shut-in members has a friend that visits her and they get into some deep conversations. One time the friend mentioned that she found it hard to get on with the new daughter-in-law. She found it difficult to love her. The advice from this faith-filled member of Lifeway, who's watching now, was, if she loves your son, you can love her. And that friend's outlook changed. Her whole outlook changed. She immediately went around to the daughter-in-law's house and a new relationship was built. The love of someone else gave her permission to love. God loves us no matter what, so we are allowed to love others. Our theme verse, say it with me if you like, 1 John 4 verse 10. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. It's something to think about. Love is only love with Christ at its heart. God is love. That's the be-all and end-all. That's his job. That's, why he sent, that's what he sent Jesus to do. That's his message. The whole of Scripture is a love story about God and humanity. He doesn't know anything else. He can't help loving all of us. And Jesus chose to share his love in the world through us. He came as a human so he could identify with us. And he wants us baptised into his family to share that love. Do you realise that? He wants us humans, he wants his children, through action, to share that love. So if you weren't sure of your role on this earth, it's to share his love. People may not be able to see God, but they can and they do see you. Is your life showing the love of God? Love is powerful. Never underestimate the power of the smallest deed done in love. So make love a priority like Jesus did. In the New Testament, love is used as a noun 110 times and as a verb 137 times. So 247 times the word love is referenced. That's got to tell us something. God is our source of love, love in its truest and purest form. Mother Teresa, when asked how she had accomplished such great things in her life, said this, None of us can do anything great on our own, but we can all do a small thing with great love. Amen. And the person you were chatting to before, 
have another chat for a minute or so. How are you going to show the love of Jesus in your life this week? Maybe spend a minute or just think about it. We don't always show love, so let's come before God in a time of confession. Lord Jesus, you said that others would know that we were your disciples and followers by the way we showed love to one another. We stand before you today and acknowledge that we have often failed to love others the way that you have loved us. And we have also often failed to return the love that you have shown to us. And so we pray... Loving Lord Jesus, you gave your disciples a new commandment, telling them to love one another as you had loved them. We confess that we have not always loved others with the same self-giving love that you have shown to us. Instead, choosing only to love those that are like us or who we know will return that love in some way. We ask you to forgive us and help us to know more of the depth of your love for us so that your love may inspire and sustain us in our efforts to bring your love to others. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his own one and only Son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. So on the basis of this promise... And by the authority and command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now have time to worship God with our free will offering. The plate will be passed around inside here. There are various ways, if you're watching online, various ways of giving online, or you may choose to support a ministry in your area. And if you're wanting to partake of the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper a little later, now's the time to get some bread and some wine ready. Let's stand for our next song too.
seated. Thanks Ivana, bring it up here. Excellent, thank you very much, good girl. Let's pray. God of mercy and love, we give you thanks and praise for all the ways you demonstrate your love for us. You provide our daily materials and needs and offer us fullness of life right now and in eternity. So with grateful and joyful hearts, we offer with thanks and praise what you have first given us. Take these gifts in our lives and use them to show your love and mercy to the world. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of safety that many of us at Lifeway are blessed with. We pray for those that live in fear with no clear path to safety. We also pray for the people struggling in the aftermath of the Moroccan earthquake and Syrian floods. Assist the aid agencies to bring help to where it's needed most and strengthen the resolve of those impacted and the aid workers placing others' needs above their own. Imbue wisdom and humility to all world and corporate leaders to make decisions to help the most vulnerable and to those whose value is hidden. Enable our leaders to find joy in strengthening the most weak, even if that may be at the expense of economic growth. Help us to never forget the love you have shown for us by laying down your life for our salvation and freedom. May we find our unique gift to share the love of Jesus in our new and existing relationships. Pave a safe path home for Pastor Mark, Joe, Jim and Kathy. May they all return well and well and rested and inspired by the experiences you have formed across the last couple of months. Shelter them from the extreme heat conditions that are expected in the next week as we pray for all people that are vulnerable to sustained heat stress. Help them find the shelter and refuge from the heat that they need. We also pray for Pastor Matt and Elise as they continue to seek God's will and direction for where their gifts are best served and shared. We pray for the Weiss family as they attend the funeral and mourn the loss of John and Selwyn's mother Dawn in Adelaide. May their family be be drawn deeper into the love of God as they share their grief and time together with family this week. We ask you to um, heal those who are in sick and need, and especially Lucy, Kim, Jim, Eva, Ruth, Wally, Shirley, John and Aina, Jan, Jenny, Inga, Boris, Tina, Bruce and Margaret. Amen. 
As you're able, please stand as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Responding to the command of our Lord and desiring the life-giving presence of Christ, we come to the table. Love of God is a gift and we do not deserve this gift. Responding to the command of our Lord and desiring the life-giving presence of Christ, we share in his body and blood. We come with our wounds and fault, ready and willing to be refreshed. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. God so loved the world that he gave God so loved the world that he gave his only son worthy is the people at home take and eat this is the body of Christ given for you and take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins communion practice is still evolving here at life by Epping We'll have one line down the centre and one table from your, my left, from your right, right across the front. So the ushers will bring you out either side. One line, feed in from there. If you wish to take the chalice, it will be following the cups. That's just self-explanatory, I think. So come, the God that made relationships now wants to have a relationship with you through his body and blood. So come, for the meal is now ready.
Consider Christ the source of our salvation, that he should take the penalty for me. Though he was pure, a lamb without a blemish, he took my sins and nailed them to the tree. My Lord and God, you are so rich in mercy, mere words alone are not sufficient thanks. So take my life, transform, renew, and change me, that I might be a living sacrifice. Consider Christ that he should trust his father in the garden of Gethsemane. Though full of dread and fearful of the anguish, he drank the cup that was reserved for me. My Lord and God, you are so rich in mercy, Mere words alone are not sufficient thanks. So take my life, transform, renew, and change me, that I might be a living sacrifice. Consider Christ, for death he has defeated, and he arose, appeared for all to see. And now he sits at God's right hand in heaven, where he prepares a resting place for me. My Lord and God, you are so rich in mercy, Mere words alone are not sufficient thanks. So take my life, transform, renew, and change me, that I might be a living sacrifice. Lord and God, you are so rich in mercy. Mere words alone are not sufficient thanks. So take my life, transform, renew, and change me, that I might be a living sacrifice. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood strengthen and preserve you in body and soul into life eternal go in his peace amen Let's pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing gift, and we pray that through it you would graciously strengthen us in faith toward you and in love toward one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.
And as is our custom, we bless each other. So turn to someone not far away from you geographically and make the sign of the cross on their forehead or on their hand or an air cross. Say their name and this blessing. Jesus gave his life for you. Amen. And for the people at home, Jesus gave his life for you. Amen. you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen. Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another as I love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We hear that call and go as God's dearly loved children to live fully, share boldly and grow deeply in the life-transforming love of God the Father. Amen. Let's stand for our last song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Just here below Praise Him above ye heavenly host Praise Father, Son and Holy Ghost Praise the Father, praise the Son Praise the Spirit now with us Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. Praise God with morning's breaking light. Praise Him through darkness of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.